And I want to open by this uh, reading something from that text, Zakaria, where you wrote that quote from Egypt to South Africa, Nigeria to Ethiopia, a new force for political change is emerging across Africa, popular protest, widespread urban uprising by youth, the unemployed, trade union, activists, writers, artists, and religious groups are challenging injustice in, and inequality, unquote. And you ask then, what is driving this new wave of protests? Um, is it the key to uh, substantive um, political change? So if we can start with that question, if we ask you that question today, uh, what would your, your answer be? Yeah, well, th thank you all for having me. And it's really wonderful to be here with Nihal, especially. Uh, really interesting to hear her analysis of, of what's happening in Egypt and elsewhere. Um, you know, I think the, the question is uh, a couple ways to answer it, right? So first, obviously, you know, what's happening in North Africa as well as in many other parts of Africa, uh, there are very many uh, specific dynamics to these. Uh, it's a very diverse continent. Many countries have distinctive politics. And that's why I think it's really important to to listen to people on the ground who who have a, a real clear sense of what's happening um, you know, within each of these struggles. Uh, what I would say, though, is that there are also common uh, dynamics that are you know, uh, shaping much of the continent in the 21st century, and that these also play a big role in, in, in fueling the kind of uprisings that we've seen from Cairo to South Africa, uh, which is you know, the way in which Africa, African countries have been incorporated into the global economic and political systems. Um, and that, I think, is producing a number of very specific contradictions and tensions uh, that have really fueled this ongoing uh, surge of uprisings that have, you know, now uh, stretched into their second or even third decade. So, uh, my sense of it is that, you know, if I had to answer the question, it, it's, it's that the many of the same dynamics that were present in 2015 uh, when we wrote the book are, are still present today and are likely to be present into into the next few years, at least because, you know, what's happening uh, both politically and economically, which are obviously very interrelated. Um, are producing these very fundamental tensions between this really aging, older uh, ruling class who are tied to uh, these economic and political systems and a younger generation like Nihal's age uh, who are really pushing back uh, against these political systems uh, and are asking for a type of change in their economics and politics that are fundamentally at odds with the ruling elite. And so as long as that tension remains, uh, I suspect we'll continue to see these uprisings going forward. Just, just a quick follow. Just sorry, Will. Just a quick follow on. Where did you? Because you write this book kind of like four years after Tahrir. Well, it comes out like four, four or five years after Tahrir Square. Where did, were there any places where you saw like a direct connection between people south of the Sahara kind of taking a lead from what they what they saw in in Tunisia, what they saw in Egypt? Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I think that was the main motivation for writing the book. So I was current at the time based at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Uh, I was teaching there as a Fulbright Fellow, and, and my co-author, Adam Branch, uh, was a senior research scholar at the Makarere Institute for Social Research in Uganda. Uh, and so the entire motivation for the book was 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 sort of just looking around the regions that we were inhabiting um, and seeing you know, mass up, uprisings taking place. This is 2012, 2013, so shortly in the wake of, of the Arab Spring. Uh, and in Uganda especially, there were the walk to work protests that were going on at that time. Um, and they were very explicitly invoking the memories of, of Tahrir Square and calling for a version of Tahrir Square to unfold in Uganda at the time. And that was not unusual in, in other parts of Africa. And so we sort of started having these conversations asking uh, why is it that nobody is paying attention to what's happening in, in so many parts of Africa uh, when it seems like this is is quite a, a common phenomenon? And as we document in the book, you know, between that period of 2005 and 2014, uh, we saw these mass uprisings in, in over 40 African countries. So, um, you know, I think the the name, the Arab Spring, is, is very much a misnomer um, that is sort of designed to uh, obfuscate what was actually happening across the continent throughout this period.